This video is going to look at how to make an item bank assessment. And this is when you're pulling from a list of items to form your own test. And there's a couple different ways you can do this. And this video is going to look at um, the standard mode. So we're going to come up to assessments. We're going to click on create new assessment. And we have some options here. We have on the fly, manual hybrid. And a manual hybrid is when you already have a PDF. Um, already set up and you want to use that same assessment and then have the kids just key in their answers. That's not what we're going to talk about in this one. And we are also going to just look at the item bank. So we're just looking at the item bank here and I'm going to click OK. And right now it's transferring this over to Illuminate Item Bank and it's going to give me some options. So it's going to give me standard mode, quick mode, item and passage. Standard mode and quick mode is what we're predominantly going to be using. Standard mode is going to give you tons of different options and you're going to have to pick a lot among those items to build your own test. And quick mode is going to generate a test for you. So if I'm doing a certain math standard and I just want you know 10 random questions on that standard, quick mode is just going to pull up that test for me and it's going to allow me to just create a quick test. Standard mode, again, I'm individually selecting each item. So it's suggested that standard mode is used more for ELA because you're probably going to want to sift through those passages and get the passage that you feel is best suited for your students and then select the questions that will go along with it. Quick mode may be better for math. If you're just hitting a certain standard, you can just generate any random questions. Um, and just like with point, you can always um, change what they've given you, but they're sort of giving you a, a quick bundle that you don't get to hand select yourself. So standard mode does take a little bit longer. So we're going to stick with standard mode. And I'm going to click next. And all of our item things should be set up from when we previously had our faculty meeting. So once it generates, I'm going to give a, a title to my name, so I'm going to give an assessment title, and this is not going to be one that I'm going to hold on to, so I'm just going to say trash, um, reading, assessment, week 15. And I'm going to click create. So once I'm here, I'm gonna, uh, it's going to ask me what standards am I assessing. And I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom and I'm going to click on um, Standards of Excellence. Then I'm going to go to English Language Arts because I think that the, the reading and writing um, standards are a little bit trickier than math. So then I'm going to go here, I'm going to click fourth grade. And it should be loading my standards. Now right here, it's going to give me the big umbrella ideas. So again, I'm going to click on literary and I can open this up right here to see the different pieces. I can even open it up a little bit farther. So let's say I'm, we're working on character traits. I'll go here and let's say we're also working on comparing points of view. So I'm going to click on those two items. Once I've collected the two standards that I really want to focus on this time, I'm going to click continue. So again, I was able to expand out all these different standards and to get all the little different pieces that I needed. My RL1, RL2, RL3, I can collapse all of these again and I can expand them back out again. So if I wanted to look at just what I'd selected, here are the two things that I selected. But I'm going to expand that back out again and I'm going to click continue. Now, we've already linked our item bank, so we should be all good here. All you need to do is click search. So it's populated some passages for me, and I generally am going to go through and look at all the different passages. It says it found 83 passages and 532 items. So let's just say I look at this first passage, and I think it looks great. I'm absolutely satisfied. It's going to say at the bottom of this passage that 11 of the standards on this assessment are matching the two standards I already pulled. Um, and for me, and maybe I'm just assessing on those two things, and I want to take those 11 questions and immediately 
assess on those. But for me, normally, I'm probably going to look at all of the standards that align with this passage. I'm happy that, you know, 11 align with the two we're focusing on, but I may want to take some other grades as well. So I can click on matching or I can click on total. I'm going to click on total. But again, you may just want to stick with just looking at those two specific standards. But I'm going to scroll down and it's going to give me all of the questions below the passage are questions for that passage above. And once you add the questions in, you've added the passage. Now I want you to take notice of the little icon that's by the question. So this means that this item can only be viewed online. For me, I print the assessments and my kids key in their answers. So depending how they're taking this assessment, this is something they would only be able to do online. You're going to want to look for something that's a paper pencil assessment um, and a computer assessment. That's generally what I'm looking for. On the right, you'll see that it has the standard, and this is one of the ones I was looking for. It's for RL3. So this standard is matched with this question, and there's both a part A and a part B. So if I want to add that question, I'm just going to click Add. And it says added, and I can remove it if I want to take it off later. Now, right here, you'll see this is a good example. This question has both a pencil by it and it has a computer screen. So this is the kind of question that I would pick for my assessment because I could print it off and I could also um, do it on the computer. They could key in their answers. Now, you'll notice that some of these standards are in red. They're in red because it's saying that these standards were not explicitly um, say that I was looking for them. If I want to add them, all I have to do is click on them. So I can click on this and it says that I'll be assessing on that standard. And you can see in the right hand corner here, it pulls up. So earlier I said I'd only wanted four RL3 and I'd only wanted four RL6. Well, now I've added four RL4 in there. So again, once I click on these, I've added four RL4 in there. And it's just the substandard, so it's got 4RL4.2, 4RL4.3. So if I click on these, it just says that I'm adding these standards to my assessment pool. And I'm going to add that standard for that question. And I'm going to do one more, so I'm going to scroll down. This question also looks great. Um, it has a pencil and it has a computer screen. And again, it says that now I'm, I, these are the two standards I've already said I'm looking for. And again, the red ones mean I haven't added the standards to tag them with this assessment. And so I'm going to add that standard or that question, I'm sorry. So right now I have three questions and it says that on this assessment, I'm assessing on this is really three standards, but it's, you know, um, gone all the way down to the substandard within the standard. So, but as all my standards tag on the side, it says I have four standards, I have one passage, and I have three items. Once I'm satisfied with what I have, I'm going to click continue. And it gives me a preview of what my test is going to look like. So it gives me the passage and again it also gives me the standards and again the black is what I've tagged to the assessment but I can click on all of these and flag RF4, I can flag um, there's RF4.4, I can tag all these standards if I want to. But it's going to show me all the different standards that I chose or sorry questions that I chose and once I make sure that this is ready to go and I don't want to make any further changes then I'll click continue. And again, I'm looking this over. This is exactly what I want. The overview, I'm not going to add a different section. And I'm going to click continue. And as you're reminding you, this assessment contains content formatted for web only, um, which would be the ones that have the pencil and the computer. So they may not print quite correctly. Now, I chose the ones that had the pencil with it, so they should be fine. Again, when you're here, you can select the um, the font you want. You can um, select the constructive response base if that applied. You can um, select the font size. Um, but you can also do this when you go to print the test. So you can generate the test right here, or you can just save it for later. I'm going to click continue and save it for later. And then it's going to pull up um, some things you're going to want to tag in your assessment. 
So we're going to want to enable depth of knowledge so that when students key in their scores, it's going to actually tell them what their depth of knowledge level is next to the question. So it'll say, you scored this percentage on depth of knowledge one, this percentage on depth of knowledge two, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to enable item type. We're going to enable the passage. And that's all we're going to enable. So we enabled depth of knowledge, we enabled the item type, and we enabled the passage. Now, I can publish and administer the test right now. So I can assign it to my class if they want to take it online, or I can just publish it and print it. I'm just going to publish it. And it says, your assignment has been successfully published. So once it's here, I have it created, I have it saved. I can go back to Illuminate. So let's say I made this test, but I don't want to use it right now, but I did make it. I can go back to return to illuminate up here in the right corner. I'm going to click this, so it looks like our home page. Okay, so if I went back to the home page, I could go to assessments, list assessments, and it should populate in my bank of what I've created. So right here, here it is, trash reading assessment 15. So I have some options of how I want to administer this test, so I'm going to click on it. So once you're here, you have some options. You can download the materials and just print the test so it's paper pencil. You can print answer sheets. That would be your scantrons that you can scan in. Um, or you can have it where, for me, I would download the materials for the test so I could print it off for my students. And I'd also want to administer it online so that they could just, my students could just key in their answers once they would taken their test and they could see their score report. So Again, I can download the materials and just save the test that way and print it off as a PDF. I can print the answer sheets um, so that they can fill it in as a scan drop. I can also administer it online. So let's say I want to administer it online. Now you've got a couple of options here. You can either add a roster to your class, which means you assign the test to your class, or you can add a quick roster, which will give you a login code for the kids. And again, the quick roster would be very similar to point, where they would just type in a code and it would take them right to the test. But I'm going to add a roster, so I'm going to assign it to my class. And I can change the date that the test is going to expire. I can change the time. So if I want to make sure they're not taking it at home, I can make it so that they can only see it active during the school day. I'm going to go in and make it for this academic year. I'm going to make it fourth grade. New Hope. I'm going to assign it to me. And I'm going to assign it to my language arts class. And let's say I want to assign it to just these two sections. So I'm going to assign it to them. And I have some other options here of how I want to administer it. But for now, we're going to keep it simple. I'm just going to assign it to those students, keep it at all students. So again, I came up here. I selected the time that I wanted it to take place. I did the year, the grade. Um, I selected my name. And then I picked the sections I wanted to assign it to. And then I would click Save. And once I've saved it, the test would be administered to them and be ready to go. So I'm going to click Save. And you can see right here it's ready to go. Now, as they're taking the test, I can come over here to Live Proctoring. I can see how they're doing, and this would be very similar to Point to see how they're doing, what questions they're getting right as they're going. It says I've assigned this to 22 students, which would be the 22 students in my language arts section. So this is assigned to them, and it'll show me the status of as students are completing it. And again, it's all ready to go right here. So this would be where I go to check, you know, the live testing and again live proctoring. If I wanted to add it as a quick, quick roster, I'm going to go back and show that. If I wanted to make it so I just had a code and maybe I could push this out to all of fourth grade so we all had the same code, or I just wanted to make it simple for my kids so that they don't have five tests waiting for them, especially if I have one on a learning map with all the different checkpoints along the way, I can just add a quick roster.
And down here, you'll see my quick roster. This would be our access code right there.